Hey everyone, welcome back to the Printosaurus. I am Aaron. Today we have the Ivos Tetris. What is it? Well, guess what? It is a new filament dryer that works with your AMS and it is a very welcomed addition. The AMS 2 came out and that was a fantastic improvement to the AMS and it offered filament drying, but it does not allow you to dry while you are printing. So today we're gonna to talk about the Ivos Tetris. Let's get to it. So before we get started with uh, showing you how I got this thing assembled and everything, Ivos did provide this product. Um, so this review is gonna be very transparent. So no issues, don't worry about that. Uh, let's get into assembly. Uh, the instructions are fantastic. Uh, that is something that I found with the Ivos Polythemus that I tested, uh, is the instructions are really good. Uh, they're very straightforward. The pictures, everything uh, are easy to identify and it works really well. So if you wanna skip this section and you can use those instructions, uh, feel free to to do so. Uh, but next up, I'm going to walk you through what I did to get this all set up and assembled and make your AMS look like what you see here. So we have our AMS unit here. And now what we need to do is get the Tetris out of the box. I'll go over what's in there and then we'll start getting this thing assembled. So same with all boxes these days. I mean, this stuff it comes very well packaged. We don't really see a lot of issues anymore. Uh, you can see here, everything is in there nice and neat. Um, one thing I do really like uh, that I noticed straight away is some of the tools that Ibos provides. Check out this. So this is one of the Allen keys and it's got a nice aluminum handle. Uh, this is a very, very nice tool. Everything is labeled. So we're gonna go ahead and pull all this out of the box. We'll set it aside and then we will jump into our installation and what we need to do. All right, so a couple disclaimers too you will find in your instructions. So this is the top uh, that's gonna replace the top on our AMS units. Uh, when you pull this out, don't grab it by uh, the center partitions. Kind of grab it on the edge. Um, and that way we don't uh, cause any issues uh, with uh, pulling any of the glue or anything like that off. So uh, it is a little heavy because it has uh, the dryers here mounted on the back, uh, which is why they want you to just, you know, kind of handle it from the sides instead of uh, in the middle. So step one of our instructions will be attaching this to the top here. So let's uh, set some of this stuff aside. Uh, we'll put our instructions over here as well. And what I find the easiest way to do this is go ahead and make sure your AMS is locked. Flip this over like this. It kind of gives you a nice angle. And then on the back side here, you have your two screws on each side. That's the hinges that will allow this to be removed. So take that nice tool that I both provided Stick that down in there. And uh, also what's cool about doing it this way is the screws can stay in place. You don't need to actually pull them out. Uh, so loosen them up and then they'll just kind of sit in the slots, which means you don't have to worry about fighting, realigning those and dropping them into the little cavity here. It just makes things a little bit easier. That's uh, something I've kind of learned along the way here as I've worked uh, with these AMS units. All right, so you've got those four screws loose. So now you can just gently pull like that. And then remember, we have our hinges locked. So if you undo those hinges now, we can just pull this up, take your unit, set it like that. And then now we have freed up this. All right, so next we need to attach our top. Um, so take your top, we can position it just like this. You want your motors to the back. Uh, or I'm sorry, your, your filament dryers to the back. And you've got some tape here holding these hinges in place uh, that you can see. So go ahead and remove those. And then once we've got those removed, remember we still have those screws in here, so be careful not to flip it back and have those screws fall out. You should be able to just take this and kind of align it. And then we can do the same thing, kind of angle it down and set it on its top. And now, Taking our Allen key, we can just screw those back in place. Now remember, this is all plastic, so you don't want to over tighten. So just be careful 
um, we don't want to over tighten and strip your screws. They just need to be taut, tight enough to where they're not moving around. So we have our top mounted. If you look at the bottom of your AMS, you'll see some screw holes here. Um, and you've got four of them. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work with our feet. So you're gonna grab these things, they look like this, and we want the slots here pointed to the outside. So we're gonna take them, set them in place, and we're going to grab our M3H8 screws, and we're gonna screw them in place. So for our next step, we're gonna be working on a little bit of cable management. So what this is here, we have one side that goes to our screen that's gonna be on the front of our unit. We have one side that goes to the heater and of course, have to power it. So if you're looking at your pigtail, it makes somewhat of a Y, you want your screen portion to be pointed to the front away from the motors. Uh, so you have some slots on your uh, feet here, so you can simply stick that in and leave about an inch, inch and a half. We'll be able to adjust this to kind of fine tune it, but so you'll press this in place. And then here on the back, you have a USB-C spot that you can plug that in. So go ahead and do that. You're gonna do that for all four. Now the ones in the middle are just gonna kind of sit there. Uh, so just uh, kind of be prepared for that. And we'll worry about uh, cleaning those up here in a little bit. But simply press all of these in place. And then here is our last one. Again, make sure your screen is to the front of your unit and the one labeled heater is plugged into the back. You get that plugged in, push that down through. And you should have something like that for step four. So next up, we are gonna work on installing our screen and then we're gonna also mount the power uh, here in the back. So your screen looks like this. Um, what you wanna do is push these screens forward and we're gonna be working with this back plate here. So I'm gonna spin this around. So what we're doing is we're going to take this and we're gonna set it in place on those feet and in the process, go ahead and plug in your screen. It just makes it a little easier to do this before you actually mount the feet. All right. Now we can take this and just set it in place on those feet. You're gonna end up something that looks like that. So with that in place, you've got three mounting holes on each side. Grab your M3 H12 screws and we're gonna go ahead and get these installed. So our front screen's mounted, they're in place by those six screws. Next up, we have to do the rear, which is our power module, which we have here. It's labeled A, B, C, and D. Um, so you want the USB-C sides facing inwards with the power cables facing down. So just kind of move the inner cables out of the way and we can just set this in place just like uh, we did our uh, front section here, same uh, screws. So the M3 by H12, so go ahead and put those in place. And then you're gonna plug them in A, B, C, and D. Just make sure they're in the right order. But what you should see when you're done is something that looks like that. Today's video is brought to you by Justway, justway.com. Jump online, check them out. They offer CNC and 3D printing services. They have a number of different materials to choose from, and they will take care of all of your bulk printing needs that you may have. If you have something you wanna CNC, well, they can take care of that too. So jump online, check them out, Justway, justway.com, just the way you like. The Ibos Tetris, we have it all assembled. Assembly was very simple. Um, instructions were great. So now that we are past that process, I've actually already got a spool of filament loaded. I'll talk more about that in a second, but let's go over basic specs of this unit. So what makes the Ibos Tetris a filament dryer you might want to use? Well, it's got four drying zones. So what it did is it takes the AMS unit, it turns it into a filament dryer, and then it enhances that even further. So so instead of it just being a filament dryer that dries the whole uh, assembly here, it now has individual divided lanes or zones that you can use these front panels to set independently to dry various types of filament with different settings. That is fantastic. I use ABS, ASA, uh, PETG a lot, and those are filaments that take on a good amount of moisture. So 
Again, being able to control those independently is an advantage that uh, this unit has for the AMS that say the Sunlu unit uh, can't do. So moving on to testing, I have a spool of Bamboo Labs uh, High Flow PETG, which is notorious for taking on a lot of moisture. And one of my go-to tests when I test filament dryers is to take filament, weigh it with my scale, uh, put them in the unit, uh, let them dry for their time cycle, and then see how much moisture by seeing how much weight is removed, uh, the filament dryer was able to remove. So this test uh, will be finished here shortly and then I will share the results of that. Another test I like to do is a sponge test and it's because it's very simple. You take a sponge, same deal, you have a moist sponge, you weigh it, see what the weight is and then we can put it in each lane and then see how well it removes the moisture of that. So it's really just a quick and easy indication that almost anyone can do uh, to see whether or not uh, they're getting uh, efficiency out of their filament dryer. Something else that the IBIS Tetris does is it has kind of a, a smart set up in terms of managing humidity so the vents here on the back are automatic and you can maintain the humidity in each zone independently as well that is another advantage so you can dry filament leave it in uh, if everything's still powered on and plugged in it will maintain humidity for each lane so in terms of interaction the screen works uh, it's very simple so you can see here i have my petg setting for that high flow uh, petg so to turn this on there's a power button and and here is a menu option below the power button and then you can simply cycle through. So you have a couple of presets, PLA, PETG, ABS, and then you have TPU, and then you have two uh, customizable settings that you can use. If you hit the gear, you can actually cycle through and do some of your presets. You have your humidity displayed here. If you hit the power button one more time, you can get where your humidity reading is and it will maintain whatever range of humidity that we set. Hit the power button one more time and that turns it off. Testing is complete, so let's talk about our results. So first up, I did do a sound test. I was curious because it didn't seem like uh, this unit was very loud. And sure enough, 48, 49 dBs is what I averaged. So that's right on par uh, with the typical level of noise that I have within my office space. So on the quieter side, in terms of other dryers in that comparison. Moving on to my filaments, we did PETG High Flow by Bamboo, we did Overture TPU uh, and Polymaker ABS. So let's talk about uh, what the initial weight was of each, what we ended up with, and I did do two test prints for two of the filaments, and we'll talk about those. So first up is our Bamboo High Flow PETG, it takes on a lot of moisture, and I struggle with this from time to time if I don't dry it. 936 grams is what this one weighed in at. And after drying, we lost three grams, so 933. I threw it in my H2D behind me and we kicked off a test print. I did a crochet dinosaur. I picked this because with the crochet, you have a lot of angles and transitions and I was seeing a little bit of stringing. I didn't film that part. I forgot, I'm sorry. So this is the end result, which I did film a little bit of. So I did remember that. Uh, and there's just a little bit of stringing, not much at all, and significantly improved. Moving on to TPU. So this roll, uh, I was really curious about because this has been sitting in my garage for a long time. And uh, here on the East Coast, we do get a bit of moisture and the weather never makes up its mind. So I would say humidity wise, uh, that's probably the perfect environment to take on some moisture. So this one came in at uh, 938 grams and it ended up drying out to 934 grams. So four gram difference. Uh, I did do a test print. I tried to print uh, like a phone case and it did end up failing because of the printer. That's a whole nother reason. We did have a, uh, a weight reduction, four grams, which I feel like is pretty significant, but still seeing the same exact quality that I was getting out of it uh, before I dried it. Moving on to ABS. Uh, so this is another old spool. Uh, it was one that if you grabbed, you could literally break off, it flaked off, all that stuff, which is a pretty good indication that it is really taking on a lot of moisture. So for ABS, this is a half spool, 467 grams, and we lost five grams, so 462. That to me is a pretty significant amount 
So the other test that I mentioned is my sponge test. I really like it because, you know, everyone's got sponges for the most part. It's easy to do. And it does give you an idea of efficiency of your unit. Uh, so 55 degrees Celsius is what I use for drying my sponges. Uh, that's a pretty good value for me where you're not just pumping a bunch of heat to it. Uh, and it gives you an idea over a certain amount of time. In my case, I did two hours at 55 degrees Celsius. So I added one other sponge to this test. What I did was I put it in in the zone next to it. And what I'm doing here is I wanna see if by heating the zone that I have set up at 55 degrees Celsius, if there's any heat or bleed over into the other lanes with the dividers and everything there. And if there is, how much of an impact is that making on filament that may be sitting next to the one that you're drying. So my sponge weight, I weighed both sponges. Uh, there was a gram difference between the two. I labeled them so I knew what was what. Uh, so my first sponge, nine grams is what it weighed at dry and eight grams for the other one. Then I weighed them wet, 18 grams and 17 grams. So now we're gonna take them out and see what we have uh, for weight to give an idea of how efficient over a two hour period at 55 degrees Celsius, uh, this dryer has been. So let's go ahead and pull those out. So this sponge feels really dry, actually. So this is my nine gram dry, uh, 18 grams wet. So let's see what we end up with. Wow, so this one came in at exactly nine grams. So in a two hour period at 55 degrees, it was able to reduce a significant amount of moisture from the sponge back to its original weight. So what I'm most curious about in this test is the sponge that was in the lane next to it. I wanna see if any of the heat had bled over to this sponge. Okay, so this sponge still feels a bit moist. So we're at 14 grams. So it did dry out a little bit. We lost three grams of water weight. So we do have these plexi panels that are acting as partitions, but there is a little bit of bleed over in terms of heat uh, within the unit. So that would be something uh, to keep in mind long-term. So what do I think overall of the Ibos Tetris? So the quality is there. It's another quality product. I haven't had any issues with prior Ibos products. So I feel like long-term, this is going to perform just as well. It is $179 US, and that is where I'm gonna leave it up to you. For me, uh, I feel like it's a good investment because I do like a number of the features that it offers. I like the ability to have automatic humidity control. I like the ability to dry independent filaments because I leave any given type of filament in my AMS units all of the time. So to be able to walk over, press a button and dry them to a setting that is catered to the type of filament it is, I like it. I like it a lot. That's a convenience thing that just works really well for me. Uh, it does have advantages over the AMS too because you can dry uh, while you're printing. Uh, you also, as I mentioned, have the ability to dry independent zones, which is something the AMS two can't do. So you can kind of take your AMS one unit and make it on par with your AMS two and then also increase some of the functionality. So those are all wins for me and why I would recommend it to you. Now, $179 is still a lot of money, so I don't wanna tell you to go out and buy it. I want it to be up to you. Uh, but overall, I think you would be happy with that purchase. So as always, guys, uh, like, subscribe, comment. I really wanna hear from you. Tell me what you guys think if you are going to get one, and uh, I look forward to hearing those inputs. So again, like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys in the next video.